with a lot of anonymous accounts started popping up and people could actually start uh, abusing you without revealing their own names. Everything is influenced by politics now. Even relationships are. If you have voted for a certain government, there are people in the family who don't talk to you anymore. You lose friends when you choose a side. I mean, what is this going on in the world? See, I respect Nasir a lot as an actor, but uh, the only thing I would like to say is that it will be better if he sees Kashmir Files before making any kind of statements about it. Well, first of all, it's a phenomenal achievement of India. Uh, until now, uh, from whatever research that has come in front of me, India has got all the vaccines from outside and we have gotten it very late, after uh, a decade, after two decades. Uh, if something like that would have happened during COVID, I'm sure more than half of the country would have perished. And therefore it was, uh, I think, uh, extremely um, uh, courageous of Dr. Bhargav to decide that we should make our own vaccine because uh, the drug pharma lobby is very strong and they uh, normally don't let outsiders in, you know. And having known this, I think there was a, a, a wonderful collaboration between the leadership, the scientists, um, our uh, defense services, all the three services, um, also our paramilitary forces, our pilots, our frontline workers, our medical staff, they all worked so much in tandem that we not only managed to uh, make this vaccine in a record period of time, within short seven months, but the rollout, distribution, manufacturing, uh, and the shots to be given uh, to such a vast population was also done in a record speed. And India kind of, uh, I think India kept making records above records, even when it came to uh, the daily vaccinations. I think we've created a record of, I think one, a few millions there also, uh, doses in a day. So with so much of, uh, you know, achievements, uh, I thought that why shouldn't we be telling the story to the younger generation of India who have only and only been shown the fault lines so far. I have my uh, uh, reasons to believe that it all started with the advent of social media. Because there, with a lot of anonymous accounts started popping up and people could actually start uh, abusing you without revealing their own names. So if I'm going to hide behind someone, it is very easy for me to, you know, uh, just malign anyone or just talk ill about someone. Once that was established, then people started coming out with their own names because they knew that they were not facing the person. So calling somebody, uh, uh, you know, whatever, cussing people or abusing people uh, started becoming the new norm. But still, when people meet face to face, they're still a little apologetic about it. And they say, Ki, yaar, wo pe to likh diya, but you know how it is. But I'm really, uh, you know, I really wonder if this keeps, as we keep moving forward, maybe this will also stop happening and when people come face to face, they might still carry on the same anger. So I think the society started getting a bit polarized with the advent of social media and then I think COVID contributed a lot to it. When all of us were sitting at home, feeling absolutely dejected and helpless, we all decided to vent our emotions out on social media. We as in, not me personally, because I'm not on social media, but uh, the world as a place. And when everyone realized that, yes, this is where you can actually, uh, you know, vomit out all the venom that you have inside, then it was a free for all. And that is the reason why everything is so polarized now. Everything is influenced by politics now. Even relationships are. 
if you have voted for a certain government, there are people in the family who don't talk to you anymore. You lose friends when you choose a side. I mean, what is this going on in the world? So everything is politics. So if it, is, it has entered your families, if it has entered your friend circles, why shouldn't it enter the film industry, which is anyway directly linked to politics? See, I respect Nasir a lot as an actor, but uh, the only thing I would like to say is that it will be better if he sees Kashmir Files before making any kind of statements about it. Because I've seen a lot of people talking about Kashmir Files negatively without seeing the film. Uh, and maybe that's what they want to do because they know once they see the film, they won't be able to speak negatively about it. Uh, the first scene in the film says it all. So. That is my only answer. I am not like Vivek who will get into the politics of everything. I am not a political person by nature. And I don't like to uh, get into, you know, war of words. I do my job. I work as you work. I think all of us uh, need you, to earn our bread tell, and you butter. Tell Vivek ki, uh, you tell Vivek ki shant raho, gadadhar, bheem, shant. No, actually, not really. That is the way he is. And I give him uh, space to be him as he gives me space to be me. Uh, he never asks me to, you know, be up in arms and become political and uh, fight the war alongside him. And hence, I don't stop him from doing whatever he has to. I think both of us, we, we, we manage our yin and yang pretty well. No, because I know how to handle one of them, so <laughs> things weren't as bad. But uh, yeah, I mean, all of us, um, believe you me, were a little worried before the film started because we knew that they could be, you know, this can, this can go anywhere. But the whole film worked out so beautifully. I don't know what it was, but uh, Nana behaved like he was probably a newcomer on the sets and Vivek behaved as if Nana is the only actor in the film, you know. So things worked out. I mean, both of them had such a wonderful equation and both trusted each other so much that uh, whatever we were, uh, you know, scared of or whatever we thought would happen, and we all needed to be prepared. <laughs> Nothing of the sort happened, and the film shoot went on very smoothly. I was also a little <laughs> frustrated because of that, because I had a you know, for firefighting, but it never came to that. So I'm, I'm glad that things worked. Yes and no. Um, I, no, because uh, I could have done so much more, for which I did not get opportunities. Uh, for the reasons uh, which I won't get into right now, otherwise this interview will become all about that. And yes, because in the recent past I have done some absolutely wonderful roles, which kind of a little, on a very small level compensated for the lack of all those uh, years. Because I could have still kept doing some mediocre work, uh, not realizing my full potential and then getting stuck into, you know, a kind of an acting. But because I didn't do anything in the interim period, I thought I could just come up and do these um, characters more honestly. Opportunities were not coming your way or not, you were not getting the kind of work you wanted to do? Not getting the kind of work I wanted. Opportunities were coming, but uh, they were... I don't know why, but, you know, if I may talk about it here, Every time people called me and they said, we need an actor for this role, it turned out to be such a stupid role. They would call me to play a mad woman. They would call me to play, you know, some uh, crazy person or uh, some, somebody who's uh, extremely talkative. Like, uh, I have been called to play a Punjabi auntie. That was the brief of my uh, character. So I, they weren't even characters, they were just roles. I don't know how they need actors to play such kind of things. They think every time there are some histrionics involved, 
uh, you need an actor. When that, that is the last thing that you need an actor for, because histrionics is something anyone can do. So we have very, uh, I think, uh, different concepts about what is an actor and what is not. <laughs>